Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Flipped Classroom courtesy of RestelleZone.com. I am sounding very excited because I'm actually videotaping a Flipped Classroom not at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yay for me. Um, <laughs> so since I know you're waiting for this and some of you probably already emailed me and said, Mr. Stella, the video's not working so I decided to redo the video. This is the Flipped Classroom Figurative Language Edition. I'm also excited because I will tell you the truth. Figurative language is one of my favorite things to teach in ELA. So I'm pumped up about that too as well. So with that in mind, welcome. Pencils and pens ready to go. Notes ready to go. Earbuds, headphones. You can use plain paper if you forgot your notes. Don't be distracted. Give my full 10 minutes. If something's not working, please email me. No excuses. Come see me in the morning. If anything crashes, hopefully nothing will burn. What you need. You will need your notes that I gave you in class today. Plain paper if needed and a pencil or pen. Please do not write outside the boxes. We'll be, be uh, writing... We'll be cutting the boxes out. Sorry, we'll be cutting the boxes out for our notes. If you hear my cat meowing in the background, please ignore her. Just ignore her. She'll be okay. We are going to go ahead and get started with our notes for today. So we're working on figurative language and sound devices. And our standards, RL 7.4, determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text, including figurative and connotative Connotative meanings, which you should know connotative means. Analyze the impact of rhymes and other repetitions of sounds on a specific verse or stanza of a poem or section of a story or drama. Then we have our I 7.4. Determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text, including figurative, connotative, and technical meanings. Analyze the impact of a specific word choice on meaning and tone, which we've been working on. L7.5, demonstrate understanding of figurative language, word relationships, and nuances in word meanings. And our EQ, how can figurative language and the use of sound devices enhance the in impact of a story or poem? And we're focusing on, sorry for not zooming in earlier, we're focusing on our lesson question for number one. First, how do I identify, analyze, and respond to the effects of figurative language within literary and informational text? We'll look at two more closely later on. It is time for similes. I know you know about similes, so do I. A simile is a comparison of two different things or ideas through the use of the word, words like are the word as. So, your notes are being written right here. Your definition is going to be written in the box right here where it says simile definition. Right there is where you're going to write. Um, that'll give you a little bit more time to copy that down. I'm not going to pause, though, but you can pause me. You can fast forward me, and you can rewind me so you can get what you need for these notes. With that in mind, similes. Here are some examples, and you are going to write down at least three of the examples that I give you. The class examples will go on your notes in this section right here where it says right here. Write at least three class examples. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at a couple. I bet you've heard of some of these. Don't forget to copy our notes, too. I don't know why it keeps going back and forth. Life is like a box of chocolates. That's from Forrest Gump. And there's another one from Carrie Underwood, Cowboy Casanova. He looks like a cool drink of water, but he's candy-coated misery. It's not enough for you to be able to look at this and see what it is. You have to tell me what the similes mean. So when he says life is like a box of chocolates, he's saying that life is surprising. As a variety of positive and negative experiences, they're not going to be all the same. Okay, and then when she said it's like a cool drink of water, but he's candy coated misery, she's saying he's very handsome, but he really is a really bad person. Okay, a couple more similes, more class examples. You're putting down at least three. Cross like a worm from a bird. This is from the used. And then because I'm happy, clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. Okay, I'm sorry. But for real, which I know y'all have heard forever and ever and ever. Well, these similes have means. They don't just sound good or make money from music. In the use, he's trying to escape his problems, but feels the problems are too big and he feels weak. Like a worm feels weak when it's trying to crawl from a bird. And... And happy by Pharrell. To feel happy because you're in a room without a roof, you feel like you're free and that there's no limits on you. Now, how do I know how Pharrell feels? Because he tweeted it when 
Kate asked them, Kate Longbrook asked them, well, okay, why is a room without a, a roof happy? He says, metaphorical, for one space without limit. This emotion can be infinite and achievable by all. So it really does mean you are free to be happy and kind of reach what you want to reach. Here's the trick, though. When you have assembly, you have to make sure there are two things that are not alike. As the girl was humiliated, her cheeks turned as red as an apple. Cheeks and apple are not alike, so you can compare those things. But saying that the girl is tall as her brothers, girls are human, boys are human, those are not two unlike things, and those are not similes. So the tip is, two things being compared must be completely different or unalike. And don't forget that just because you see the word like or see the word as does not mean that that's a simile. So, I'm actually a video very soon, and in the video, moves like Jagger, no, you're a human, Jagger's a human, that is not a simile. So, in this video, see if you can find any other imposters. First person to come to me with the correct answers on Tuesday when will win 200 house points for their house, okay? So tell me all the houses you see besides Move Like Jack or in this video. Um, I think I'm just going to give the link to the video in the comment section or put it on my, my page so that you can watch it. I don't know how well the video is going to play during these notes. Plus, it'll take me over my 10 minutes. So I love you. You can watch the video after you do your notes. <laughs> Yay! All right, so bye-bye video. I know, it's going to be so cool sounding. I know I love you video, but it is your turn to write some similes. And I don't want just any kind of simile, okay? I want you to use these pictures you see. I will zoom in on them. I want you to connect to the picture, look at the imagery, and ask yourself, what kind of simile can I write, okay? Now, I don't want these overused, boring similes and metaphors when you're writing your own. Saying that your eyes are as blue as the sky or that you're quiet as a mouse. Anything that has been used that you've heard in class or read in books, uh-uh, not those kind of similes. Make them up on your own and be creative, okay? So you have these wonderful pictures and you're writing your examples under my simile examples on your notes. I don't know if you saw that. I'll go back to it. We're writing it right here, okay? So here we go. Here's the first picture. Here's an example of a written simile. Her fear was tight and thick like icy tentacles, threatening to choke away her courage, okay? Her fear was like icy tentacles. That is the simile. It compares her fear to icy tentacles, meaning that she was just really, really afraid and the fear would not go away. And then here are the next five pictures from them. You can pause and rewind. The first one I showed you, that's the second one. That's the third one. It's beautiful. There's the fourth picture, and there's the fifth picture. Pause it, take some time, and write at least three good similes. Nothing that has been heard over and over and over again. Okay, and remember, I will put the video up. I will, I will, I will. I'll put the link to the video. It's a YouTube video. Link to the video in the comments, or I'll put it on my website so that you can see it when you look at figurativelanguage.html, which you're on now. Metaphors is next. I'm running out of time. For metaphors, a metaphor is a way of describing something by comparing it to something else, an implied comparison between two unlike things. You're writing your notes here, on the metaphor side, and our definition in the metaphor box right there. Okay? So again, it's a comparison of two or more unlike things not using the word like and not using the word as. For example, he's the devil in disguise, a snake with blue eyes. I kind of like the cowboy Casanova by Carrie Underwood. And you're writing your three examples for me here where it says class examples in your notes. Okay, that's where you're going to write at least three examples. So back to the devil in disguise and a snake with blue eyes. What is she really saying? She's saying that he seems like a nice guy, but he's pretty deceiving. She also apparently likes his eyes. Here's another metaphor. The road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor. What's being compared? The road is being compared to a ribbon of moonlight. And what does it really, what does it really mean? All it means is that the moonlight was reflecting off the road. And the road was kind of probably windy and turning like the picture right here, which made it look like a ribbon of moonlight. 
That's from The Highway Man, by the way, one of my favorite poems ever. We have another metaphor. My heart's a stereo, it beats for you, so listen close. By Gym Class Hero Stereo Hearts. And you're writing it in your same ex place for your examples, but it really just means I love you. You make my heart beat faster being near you. And I know some of y'all felt that when you've been in love, oh, and your heart beats fast when you're next to this guy. Our girl. So, what a metaphor is. It compares two unlike things by saying that one thing is dis a dissimilar object or thing. So it can't be two things that are similar. So dad is a monster in the morning before he drinks his coffee. Coffee. The dad is not really a monster, but the comparison is, com uh, is explained. Not example. Dad is a boat. Where's the metaphor? Where's the explanation? So although dad and a boat are dissimilar, there's no clear reason for the comparison, so it doesn't make sense as a metaphor. It has to make sense. So, dad is a monster in the morning before he drinks his coffee. Tips. Usually you'll see the being verbs. Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been. And think about it. It can easily change to assembly if you do put in like or as. So make sure the comparison is obvious or it's explained. Oh no, there's another video for I don't know how it's going to translate on uh, some of this, this cast that I'm taping. So it might chop it up or uh, cut off the words and make it really slow and crazy. So I'm not going to play the video. I'm sorry, I love you. I'm not going to play the video. But as I go over my 10 minutes, it is your turn to write three examples of metaphors using one or more of these images. So there are five more images and you are writing metaphors. And again, nothing that you've seen before. He was a rock, you know, the girl was a mountain. I want you to use your own ideas and really focus on these pictures because they're pretty wonderful. Okay. You're writing your examples in the section right here where it says write at least three examples here. That's where you're writing your examples. Here's the first picture. And again, pause, fast forward, rewind and get what you need. Okay. There's the next one. Blue sunset one right here. Oh, I love this picture. That's another one too. And you don't have to do the obvious. You see who's in the picture. Maybe focus on something besides the obvious. Okay. Ask yourself, what do you see? Here's the example from me. And by the way, that's my picture too. I took it like five years ago. In her eyes, his love was a dying rose, and his words were the thorns. They were painfully beautiful, but crumbling away just the same. And so in this, there are two metaphors. Love is being compared to a dying rose. Words are being compared to thorns. So basically, they were probably breaking up. Basically, their love was ending, and what he was saying to her was, was hurting her. I mean, he was trying to be nice, but it still was hurting her the same, okay? It didn't change anything what he was trying to do. So, remember, obviously, this dying rose right here, which I thought was very beautiful, you might not think it. You're going to look at these pictures and, and see what you see. You may not have seen love and, and being broken up when you see this picture. So, when you look at it, think about the imagery and think about going beyond what just the picture says, okay? So you have those five pictures. And there's another one, yay. Again, remember, you're comparing two things that are unalike by saying that one thing that's not similar is like something else. Uh, the dad is a monster in the morning. And then look at the other examples and look at my example too as well. Guys, I know you are super familiar with symbols and metaphors, which is why I'm very comfortable in saying that that is it for the flipped classroom. That is all your notes. Let me know if you need anything at all. Do not forget your project is due tomorrow. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And maybe I'll sing some more for you in class. La, 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 la. All right, that is it. I am Mrs. Restell from RestellZone.com. Have a wonderful day.